The Gospel of Mark, which we heard from today, is by far the most condensed, the most action-packed of the four Gospels. From a word count perspective, the Gospel of Mark is about half the length of the Gospel of Luke, and you can read the entire thing, start to finish, in a little more than an hour. Yet Mark likes to include some small, seemingly insignificant details in his writing. For a book that is so sparse on some of the big details that you find in the other Gospels, it is fascinating to see what does show up. Our Gospel today focuses on Mark's version of the temptation of Jesus in the desert. And talk about economical. The story of the three temptations takes 11 verses in Matthew, 13 in Luke, and exactly two sentences in Mark. Here they are. At once, the Spirit drove him out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. That's it. 33 brief words, two sentences, and yet that second sentence contains two oddly specific details. He was among the wild beasts, and angels ministered to him. Why is that important? What does that mean both for Jesus and for us? On a literal level, we could simply say that the desert was a dangerous place. And the gospel wants to point out that the scene of Jesus' temptation was hostile and inhospitable. In the wilderness outside Judea, you'll find scorpions, jackals, and leopards. For a man vulnerable and disoriented from hunger, these wild beasts posed a real threat. But as many commentators have pointed out, these wild beasts are also suggestive of some other things. These wild beasts can symbolize the many, many temptations that Jesus experienced while he fasted and prayed. From Matthew and Luke, we know of the three big temptations, stones into bread, power over the kingdoms of the world, and the testing of God. But you can imagine that Jesus experienced other, smaller and more subtle temptations that were like wild animals, surrounding him, circling him, and waiting for a moment of weakness to make their move, to attack when he was unable to defend himself. We know these types of temptations ourselves. Temptations to impatience or selfishness. Temptations to take an easier, less honorable path. Temptations to give in to envy or lust or greed. Temptations to give in or give up. Jesus was fully human, so he experienced these same kinds of temptations. He knew what it meant to struggle. In a way, the phrase, he was with the wild beasts, is a short-form version of Jesus' whole life and ministry. He lived and died among the wild beasts of power and influence in his own times. People who mocked him, who spit on him, and who tortured him. Our experiences in our own lives may be similar. Because there are times for each of us when the beasts are all too real. Moments when faith falters. Nights in the darkness when we are filled with despair. Yet we are not alone, just as Jesus was not alone. Look at the second part of this verse. The angels ministered to him. Even in the worst moments, even when the trials seemed too big, Jesus was never abandoned or without support. Now we can only imagine what this looked like for Jesus. In trying to depict this verse, artists have chosen to show the angels giving Jesus a banquet, like in Jacques Stella's 1640 painting, titled Christ Served by the Angels in the Wilderness. 
Here we see the angels offering Jesus bread and fresh fruit while they sprinkle flowers over their offering. But of course, God didn't just send angels to Jesus' relief and delight at the end of the 40-day fast. Instead, we know that God provided loving, supporting service to Jesus, just as we are called to provide loving, supportive service to each other. This is a model for what we are meant to be, what we are meant to do for one another. Now today's gospel ends with something that sounds a bit harsh, but is intended to be filled with encouragement. Repent and believe in the gospel. We focus on the concept of repentance during Lent, and repentance should be our response to those wild animals and temptations that we find in our own lives. Yes, sometimes we're too hungry, too disoriented, too discouraged. We are weary, and after what we've been through with the pandemic, we may feel like we've given too much, that we've lost too much. And at that moment, those wild animals are circling, waiting to make their move. The discouraging temptation that we hear whispered in our ear at those moments by those wild animals pulls us away from God. They tell us that other paths will provide sweetness, power, and riches. That we are too far gone, that we are too spiritually broken for redemption. We fall prey to the beasts that tell us that God would never care about us, that we are far too sinful. But against those voices, those temptations, There are stronger voices, the ones of the angels who insistently nudge us back to our path, who accompany us and bring us back on the road toward God, offering forgiveness, renewing hope, and reminding us that no one is beyond the reach of God's mercy. The wilderness can be a frightening and threatening place, But the angels who minister to us have voices filled with love, songs ringing with compassion, and support that reassures us when we are dejected or unsure. Let those be the voices that we listen for this Lent. Let those be the voices that sustain us. Let those be the voices that conquer our temptations and lead us out of the desert. And may God bless you on your journey this Lent.